In general, when we solve the Hamiltonian, e chat psi equals e psi, we end up with a set of eigenfunctions, a set of wave functions that solve this Hamiltonian, and each eigenfunction in that set has a specified energy. So in general, we don't just get one solution, we get a set of solutions. And this set of solutions forms what we call an orthonormal basis set, a complete orthonormal basis set. So we need to talk a little bit about what we mean by each of these things. First, let's connect this idea to something that you already know something about. So if we think about vectors in Cartesian space, so we have an x, y, z Cartesian directions, I can specify any point in that Cartesian space, so any point here, by a vector, let's call it r, that has a z component, an x component, and a y component. So I have a z component, an x component, and a y component. And I can describe this vector r in terms of, let's say that this is has a length a, um, the y component has a length b, and the z component has a length c. So I can describe this vector as a times a unit vector in the x direction plus b times a unit vector in the y direction plus c times a unit vector in the z direction. So any point, any vector in Cartesian space can be expressed as a linear combination of unit length equals 1, or these are normalized vectors, their length is equal to 1, unit vector, and those unit vectors form a um, complete set because I can, com I can describe any other vector in Cartesian space by just using those unit vectors. And the reason that works part partly is because these vectors are also orthogonal to each other. So you know that x, y, and z are what we call or Orthogonal. And in Cartesian space, you always think of that as meaning that they have 90 degree angles between them. But that's only true in Cartesian space. The real definition of orthogonal is that if I look at this z vector here, and I look at the shadow that it makes on the xy plane, so if I Think about this xy plane and I ask myself what shadow does the z vector make on that plane? It makes a zero shadow. So there is a zero shadow, so each of the vectors makes a no shadow on any of the other vectors. And so that's what we really mean by orthogonal. And mathematically that means that the dot product for those vectors is zero. So if I take the x vector dot y vector, I get zero. If I take x dot z, I get zero. And if I take y dot z, I, it equals zero. That's the real definition of orthogonal. So if we translate that to our um, wave functions and think of them as vectors in a different, not Cartesian, but a different space, right? Um, we can write down then that their length has to be equal to one and so they need to be normalized. And so normalized just means I have to make sure that psi star psi integrated over all space is equal to one. So the length of that vector is equal to one and they have to be orthogonal, 
And so the way I take a dot product of these functions is to take the complex conjugate of one function, let's call it n, times the dot product of any other function in the set, integrate over all space, and that's equal to zero. So that will show, that will ensure that all of my um, functions in this set of functions that solves the Hamiltonian problem will be orthogonal to one another. And if they're normalized and orthogonal, they will form this complete basis set. And so I will be able to describe any state of the system in terms of a linear combination of the set of eigen value, eigenfunctions that solves the problem. So first, let me convince you that these um, solutions to the eigenvalue problem for the Hamiltonian are orthogonal. So if I have a set of functions that solve this problem, then I know that if I operate h hat on any one of those functions, I will get the energy for that function times that function back again. So then if I do the same thing and operate on psi 2, I get e2 psi 2. Now, furthermore, we know that h hat is Hermitian. And so we can write that psi 1 h hat psi 2 complex conjugate integrated over all space is equal to psi 2 complex conjugate h hat psi 1 integrated over all space. Um, so let's see what we get when we do each of these operations. So on this side, we have psi 1 times when I operate h hat on psi 2, I get e2 psi 2. So this is e2 psi 2. And I want the complex conjugate of that integrated over all space. That has to equal psi 2 star. And when I operate h hat on psi 1, I get e1 psi 1. And so I have e1 psi 1 integrated over all space. And those two things have to be equal. So e2 and e1 are just constants, so I can pull them out of my integrals. And so I have e2 integral of psi 1 psi 2 star d tau equals e1 psi 2 star psi 1 d tau. So now I notice that this integral and this integral are exactly the same integral. So either e1 equals e2. So I have two choices. Either e1 equals e2 or the integral of psi 2 star psi 1 over all space is equal to 0. That's the only way I can get these two sides to be equal to each other. But we know that this can't be true because we have picked two different solutions in our set, and those different solutions have different values of the energy. And so because I've picked two different solutions, E1 cannot equal E2, so that means that my two wave functions must be orthogonal to each other. So by definition, if I have a Hermitian operator and I get that set of eigenfunctions, when I solve this eigenvalue problem, 
my set of eigenfunctions will be orthogonal. And then I can always or normalize them so that they will be orthonormal. So the take home message is that these solutions to my Hamiltonian eigenvalue problem form in orthonormal basis set. And we'll denote that set by the set psi sub n e sub n. And that means that I can define or describe any arbitrary function in um, space in terms of a linear combination. So sum sum over n with some coefficient, some amount of each vector in the basis set. So this is a sum, so this would be c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2 plus c3 psi3 plus and so on. And um, the numbers 1, 2, 3 just index, just number the different solutions to the Hamiltonian equation. So this linear combination can be used to describe any state of the system. So now, in analogy to our Cartesian coordinates, in the Cartesian coordinates, we only had three basis functions. In this quantum space, we have an infinite number of basis functions. And this space is called Hilbert space where we have an infinite number of orthonormal vectors or basis functions. And those functions are described by the set of eigenfunctions that solve the Hamiltonian problem. So we've gone from three-dimensional space, which we can visualize and understand, to an infinite dimensional space which clearly we can't visualize, draw, or wrap our heads around. But if you continue to think about the analogy of Cartesian space, which you can draw and you can visualize, then hopefully you can start to draw that analogy and see how any state, any vector, any point in this infinite space can be described as a linear combination of basis vectors.